Hey guys, Tony here. It's uh, Sunday. Uh, it's November the uh, 15th, and um, um, I really wanted to get this video made yesterday, but um, I felt bad. I did not feel good at all, um, all day yesterday, and um, I had to go running around and stuff too, and, and um, I just wasn't up to it. I didn't want to get on here um, feeling bad and discourage anyone because of the way I was, <laughs> I was feeling. But, um, guys, I was really excited, though, because um, Friday, it was literally when I was uploading the last video, um, this video here, um, while it was uploading, um, I was sitting here getting ready to, uh, I was getting my key, you know, I'll doing all my stuff to get ready, my titles and everything, getting ready to, 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 to post it. And um, I heard, doot, doot, doot. Well, that's the sound my coffee maker makes whenever um, it shuts off. Well, it, when it comes on, when it gets finished brewing, it, it makes that sound too. But I mean, I knew I wasn't brewing any coffee because I was drinking coffee. So I heard it go do that. And um, in the back of my mind while I'm working, I'm just thinking that the coffee maker just shut off. Because after about, I don't know, an hour it times out. And it shuts off and makes that noise. And then I'm sitting here working, and about two minutes later, I heard it again. Now, at this time, Tyler, my daughter, my wife, everybody's gone. I'm here by myself. My phone is sitting right in front of me. I mean, it's like right here. It's always right by my side in case, you know, one of my kids calls my mom. I mean, uh, my wife calls. Oh, well, my mom calls. I'm going to really freak out. She's been gone for a long time. Anyways, um, uh, I heard that noise again, so I, I got up and ran into the kitchen. And um, the coffee pot was unplugged. So then I'm like, my hair stands up on my head. So um, I'm looking around thinking, is there anything else? Sometimes the refrigerator beeps if you leave the door open. If somebody's got something that's leaned over in the door, it keeps it from shutting all the way. It'll, it'll beep to let you know. I checked that. No, it wasn't, it wasn't open at all. Um, so I'm thinking, what else could make that noise? The only other thing that I could think of that could make a beeping noise is the smoke alarm. But the smoke alarm is is so loud and everything. If it had went off, I would have known the difference between the smoke alarm and my coffee pot. So I don't know what it was, guys. But here's what's weird. It did it twice. It went beep, beep, beep. About a minute or two later, beep, beep, beep. It did it again. So um, I gave up on trying to figure out what it was. So I went on and I finished the video and all. And then I'm, um, I'm actually looking at comments later on that evening. Later on in the evening. And um, someone brings to my attention, because actually when I was watching the video back, I, you know, I always watch it after I upload it, make sure that everything, you know, is right, or at least that, that everything recorded, because uh, I don't always have time to edit it or look at, watch it before. So, um, you know, that's just sometimes the way I do it. But that's the way I was doing it Friday. And then I heard that beeping at the end and thought that I was hearing it again. And um, it was weird, but I, I figured it out. I figured out it was coming from the video. But um, that was so weird that, I, that it happened at the end of the video. I don't know. While I was recording the video, I don't remember hearing that. But um, it, it probably was my coffee maker. I mean, I, like I, I made coffee not, you know, a while before I started the video Friday night. But the, the crazy thing is, is that um, I wasn't playing the video when I was uploading it, so it couldn't have been the video making the noise either. And plus, I heard it twice. So, but all together, that's three times again. That's beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. That's twice while I was uploading it. And then another time on the video, guys, that's 333 again. This is insane. I mean, look, I, guys, I ain't trying to be funny now. I mean, you know, I've seen numbers and stuff, and I try to encourage you when I see things. But this is getting, it's getting insane. There's this 333 thing is becoming like, um, it's starting to really get my attention now. I mean, more, so, I mean, I, I always like 1111 and all, I've been seeing it all my life, but. I see it occasionally on the phone, I see it here, I see it there. But I mean, every five minutes, this number is popping up. Somehow or another, 333 is popping up again. It's weird. I feel like um, I feel like that movie that, was it Jim Carrey or somebody played it called 23, where he kept seeing 23 everywhere? I'm starting to feel like that. I'm like losing my mind. But see, that's um, that's that's only part of it. Friday night after, the, after that happened, and um, I'd finished uploading the video and all, and um, I, have, I was out on the porch. It was... Um, I want to say it was about, it was about 9 o'clock. Yeah, it was about 9 o'clock, and Friday night's here at that time. That's prime time here, 
cars are up and down the road. I mean, every couple seconds. I mean, you can't hardly talk to somebody. There's so many cars with people going out to eat or coming back from shopping or going shopping or going wherever they go. And uh, Friday nights is the worst, and it's always been that way. I don't remember a Friday night unless it was like a really bad storm or something to scare people indoors that it wasn't traffic everywhere. Not only that, 9 o'clock is when people down in the other neighborhood start to um, hang out and make noise. I mean, they'll have radios playing and music, and, you know, you'll hear people yelling and screaming, noise going on, people working on their houses or working in... My, my neighbor next door's got a, a shop. He's always building something or working on something over there, and you always hear grinding and, you know, and just noise coming from over there, the air compressor running. There's always noise everywhere. Well, 9 o'clock this past Friday night, there wasn't no noise. Friday the, thir the 13th. I don't, I don't know what, why. That's weird, but there was no noise. Um, I'm standing on the porch, and I'm just looking around. It. There's this ominous feel in the air. I can't even describe it to you guys. It's weird. It was, um, it was just so quiet and so calm. And then in the calmness, all of a sudden, I heard some... At first, I thought I was hearing another shofar to grab my attention, but it was the wind. And all of a sudden, the wind, just big gust of wind, just kept coming out of nowhere. And that noise was coming from the wind. And um, it was weird. It had this, just this weird feel. So I'm looking up at the sky, and I'm just thinking about how ominous it feels outside on Friday night here. And I'm looking up at this certain star facing the, the west on my porch. You can face the east or the west on my porch, which is cool because, you know... You know Jesus always says it comes from the east to the west, so I feel like I'm going to be able to see him, you know. <laughs> well, when I'm looking at this star in the west, I don't know what star it was. It doesn't even matter because when I finish, you'll see why. I see this star in the west. It's twinkling, just like all stars twinkle. And I'm just, I'm thinking about God and I'm, you know, thinking about all these things that are happening, considering these numbers and things. Sorry, if y'all hear noise, it's my cats. They're playing. Um, they get rowdy in the morning. Um, but I'm considering all these things, and that star's twinkling. All of a sudden, guys, I see the most red, blood red light flash from that star. I have never seen anything like this before. I've seen red colors in the stars for a, a little twinkle, you know, and it's, you see all the colors. But no, this was different. There was a bright red light. Poof! I mean, it was just like, you can't miss it. I mean, I'm sitting there, whoa. And then I'm watching it, and like every few seconds, it would do it again. Boom. It's almost like, it was almost like a fire alarm when it goes around, or a smoke alarm, or a fire alarm in a building. You know, whenever you see the fire alarm, it's just the light. You know, not, not talking about the sound so much, but you see that little light that's always on the ceiling when there's a fire alarm going off. You see that little red light going around, and like, you know, every second or so, you see it, it comes back around. It's, doo, 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 you know what I mean? That's what it looked like. And I, I, I said, I shook my head and looked at it again. I wiped my eyes. I, you know, I adjust my glasses. I'm, I'm focusing. I'm like, am I really seeing this? I'm, or is this my eyes playing tricks on me? Then I thought, is it clouds? There wasn't no clouds. So I look over to the left there, a little bit more further, you know, closer, or more, more westerly, I guess you could say. Um, maybe um, southwest a little bit. I see another star. And it's a little smaller, but I'm looking at that star. And it's the same way. There's red, bright red in the star. Every time it goes, it's like it's, it's like it's like like one of those lights. Every it's flickering, and every couple seconds or every second or so, you see this poof, this red burst. I mean, it catches your attention. I mean, look, I've been looking at stars my whole life. I ain't never seen nothing like this, and I would know. I would know. I would definitely know if I had ever seen this before. I wasn't like focused on the star, trying to see something different. I was just gazing at it. Then I turned around to the east and started looking at the stars in the sky and walking around the yard. And every star I seen was doing the same thing. I ran in the house. I said, Tyler, I need you to come out here and I need you to look at this and tell me I'm not going crazy. He said, what? So he comes out on the porch and he's looking due east. Because I, I showed him the one to the west and, and I said, well, it's, it's kind of behind the trees. But look to the, look to the east. It doesn't matter where you look. So he looks to the east, and we could see Mars straight, kind of almost straight up ahead. There were some other stars in the front yard, and um, he's looking at it. He said, I don't see nothing. I said, just watch. So he stayed there, sat there and stared for a couple seconds. He said, oh, wow. He jumped back, almost jumped back and fell on me. He said, what in the world? I said, yeah, keep watching. He said, he keeps watching, and that light is a choo, choo, 
to it's red blood 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 red i said tyler something's wrong i said where's the traffic tonight he says oh wow there ain't no trash nine o'clock on friday i said i know and um we're looking around and that wind is and it's just picking up and gust of wind and it's just the most ominous feel i got chill bumps i said let's walk out in the front yard and just look around in the stars and we was looking around and all the stars are red they're just bursting with this red light I have never seen, guys, I ain't making this up. I wouldn't make this up. I, I'm telling you, I, look, if there, maybe there's some kind of atmospheric condition that could cause this, guys, if you want to look into it and, and let me know about it, that's great. But I'm telling you, I had this feeling of this, that God was giving us a warning Friday night, and I don't know what it means exactly. I mean, maybe it just follows in suit with everything else that he's given us warnings about. But nevertheless, I've never seen anything like that. Um, I tried to record it with the phone. I tried to make a video. I tried everything. I could not pick them up on my camera, on my phone. I couldn't pick them up at all. You couldn't see the stars at all with the camera. They were too small, I guess. And it was there's. I do have a security light in the side of my house too, and that thing's so bright. That could have been a reason why my camera won't pick nothing up in the sky. Sometimes I can get the moon, but it'll be all blurry, and you know you can't even tell it's the moon by the time you take the picture. But anyways, guys, um, that was really crazy. That was really crazy. So, anyways, um, I, we finally um, we came back inside. Tyler laid out on the truck bed. Um, I went to bed probably about 9, 30, 10 o'clock, I think, because um, I had to work and um, Saturday morning. And so he goes out on the bed of the truck, and he said he laid out there for a long time just gazing at the stars. And he said that every star he could find had the, the same kind of red burst in it. I mean, it, well, it's not obvious unless you're looking at it. Now, I went back out last night just to make sure that you know, I just wasn't just reading into something too much. And uh, it wasn't happening last night, guys. So anyways, here's what I wanted to get to here. Um, well, that was the main thing. I mean, because, you know, that was crazy. But I just, when I started going through comments, and I, I went through them um, Saturday night, um, I mean, up for a long time yesterday. And uh, I'm seeing this common theme that just about everybody, not everybody, but, you know, I mean, a lot of people are seeing the same kind of, of stuff with the 333, the 111, the 555, and two, two repeating numbers, and they all mean something, but the 333 is the most prevalent. There's people, people at work are seeing it. Um, if you see all oh, my, uh, you can go through the comments yourself and just, I mean, they just go on and on. Listening at the 4.5 mark and just realized I woke up to go to the bathroom last night, looked at the clock, it was 333. I thought that's odd. Um, God never speaks to me in numbers, but I wonder if that means something. Goosebumps all over me began talking about 333. Thanks, brother. Okay. So then, Tony, I saw a video from Brewer, the little 333, crying out to God, um, learning. I think the video came out about a year ago. He talks about the number 333. The video is less than three minutes, if I'm remembering correctly. His website is propheticnumbers.com. Okay. And so if you just go through here, guys, and look. Now, um, I'm not going to go through all of these um, because it would just take too long. But um, you can you can certainly go and look at look through the comments and just see how many times somebody has some kind of a situation where they've seen 1111 or mainly 333. And you remember the other video, what I'm telling you about 333. I mean, there is something really up with this. And i got some more information about that here coming up in a minute. But I just wanted to... Um, to do. I see 333 every day as well. It's crazy how many times that happens. And, um, you know, maybe maybe um, there's some truth in the fact if you're looking for a number, maybe you're going to see it. But there's also situations where people aren't. Like people waking up, this one person, I have to find it. So, oh, my goodness, not long, not long watching this, I am seeing 333 on the time. Okay, so, I mean, that's odd. And then, um, uh, you know, people have all kinds of ideas about it. But um, I'm, I was way down in under comments, and it just got to where, like every other comment, somebody had seen something about this 333 phenomenon, and it's weird. And um, 333, of course, means to observe carefully, you know, in the Strong's Concordance, and I already knew that. And so I've been observing. Um, God admitted Aaron, he posted, um, you know, because 333, the 333rd third day of the year is, is November 29th, which is the day that Israel was signed officially into a nation by the United Nations, which, incidentally, makes that their official birthday, not May the 14th, 2021. Or, you know, their birthday would have been in May of 1948, in May. They actually signed everything in on uh, uh, May 1947. 
on November 29th. So that's a clue right there. Because we know the fig tree generation, we're, everyone is looking at May the 14th being kind of the, the end of the end. But then I had the time clock thing happen. And, you know, the, the, the latest people were clocking out is 3.33. So that's almost like God is saying the, the, the latest we're going to be out of here is 3.33, which is November 29th. In other words, that's the day we have to be out of here by then. Okay, that's just what I'm getting. Okay, I'm not saying that's for sure. I'm just saying that's what my that's what I'm picking up with my spirit. So he puts uh, three, 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 and he asks to, if I think about the fact that November be, you know, he was saying punch out. You know, November 28th will be 3:32, November 27th 3:31, November 26th 3:30. Because 3:30 is when I get off work. 3:30, November 26th is Thanksgiving. I get off of work at 3:30. I punch out by 3:33. And sometimes it's it's different, but that one whole week I punched out at 3:33 exactly. Unawares. Now that one day it was 3:32 and a couple seconds before, and I waited, like I said, but it was still odd. It was that close. I mean, who knows? I mean, that clock could have been off a couple seconds. I don't know, but it was just odd that I was at least four out of five days I was exactly punching out at 3:33, and that one day it was 3:32 and 50 seconds or something. So I just waited a few seconds and let it flip over. Um, but that was still odd. And it was Friday though. The, that was on a Thursday because it was on 3:32 in, in some seconds. Because Friday I was talking to my boss and his boss for a long time went to the clock and everybody was gone. I thought it was going to be like 3:36 or something. Got to the clock 3:33, of course. So I left talking to one of my uh, employees and he was going out the door and telling him not my employees but my coworkers, telling him about um, the preacher that works there who has a car that's got 3:33 on his tag. And, um, and telling him how I was clocked out at 3.33 all week. And um, that's the day that I went home and I saw that Jeep with the tag hanging off and I had to get up close to it so I could read it because I was curious. And it had the same kind of, it had letters. I didn't look at the letters. I wish I had it now. Maybe that means something. I doubt it. But it was the numbers, though, that meant something to me. So I see the letters and I see the number 333 again. And that's the only numbers on there, not 3334 or nothing like that. I'm talking these two tags were just a little few letters in 333 period. And when I saw that tag riding up the street, my hair stood up and I'm like, Whoa, because I'm like trying to get to that car so I could see the tag because it's funny. So almost like God made it look funny so I would try to look at it. And remember, the car is moving away from you. It's moving away. It's leaving, just hypothetically. So I look over at that church, and um, I see those pyramids. Um, the church is um, King City Church. So I'm like, I can't remember what it's called now. Something like that. But it's got pyramids on there. So anyways, to make a long story short... Um, 333 is like clock out time. That's like the, the very last time, or very, very last moment. Just like May 14th would have been the end of the fig tree generation. It's almost like God saying, no, it would have been if that's when it was signed. But it was signed. See, because the signing is what makes it official, not the announcement. Like you said, birthday. When you're born, you signed, they signed a document of your birth certificate. That's the day you're born. It's official. It's on paper. You can say to your friends that, oh, I had a, I just had a baby or whatever, or I, I have a new child in the family. On, and he was born on such and such a date. You know, you could, you could celebrate his birthday anytime you wanted. Said, well, we're going to celebrate it on this day because you know whatever. But the signing in happened on May the twenty, I mean uh, November 29th, 1978. Uh, 1978. Now my brain just died. 1947. Um, the signing in was um, November the 29th, 1947. So that is the actual birthday, and that's the end of the fig tree generation, not May. So I'm not looking at the spring right now. Now, maybe if everything passes, I'll be looking. You know, I'm going to be looking no matter what. And so, I mean, I'm looking. If there wasn't no signs, if there wasn't no dates to look at, I'm still looking because God's showing me stuff every day. I'm not, I don't, I'm not setting my, myself on a time. I'm not putting God in a box like that. I know Jesus could come any time, any second. God's sovereign. He's king, and he's going to send Jesus when he's ready to send him, and that's all there is to that. That's, I've always stood firm on that belief. However, there is an appointed time. We know that because God does the, that is the way God does things. He has an appointed time for everything. And there's an appointed time. We just don't know what it is. But he may be trying to reveal it to us because it says in the Bible he does nothing without telling his, pro, his servants the prophets. And there's questionable stuff about all these people putting comments, well, no man knoweth the day or the hour. Read Matthew 24 at the end. For goodness sakes, guys, go read the Bible. Stop Stop going on here and, and making forecast about things. You have no, you, you, you don't have no business saying something if you don't know where you got it from. In Matthew, it says, it says that the heavens and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. 
But of that day and hour knoweth no man, not even the angels, but the Father only. That is talking about the end of the world, guys. Please read your Bibles. Please stop bombarding me with this. It's driving me nuts. Because I want to get on there, and every time I see it, I, you know what, I want to explain it, but I, I, you know what, I'm not, I don't have time. I'm not have time to explain to every single person that can't open up their Bible and read it. Okay? We're not supposed to know the day or the hour is based on that one verse. Because Jesus says this. He says, he says, to watch therefore, lest I come unto you as a thief in the night. He says, lest, read your Bible, guys. He says, lest I come unto you in an hour, he says, or I will come to you in an hour you do not expect. So the opposite of that is if you are watching, you will know the hour and the day. He won't come to you as a thief in the night. Guys, please read. Please stop commenting unless you, you read your Bible. Please. I mean, I wouldn't come on here and tell you a bunch of crap and a bunch of stuff. Now, my feelings on things are my feelings. I'm sharing that with you, and I'm also sharing with you these incredible things. But as far as the Bible goes, guys, the Bible is right in front of you. You don't, I don't need to tell you and explain you these things. You have a Bible, read it. You can go online and read it on Bible Gateway or Bible Hub. I, I don't mean to sound... I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just frustrated with that because, um, guys, God does nothing without revealing to his prophets, the ser his servants, the prophets. It's in the Bible. Guys, what do you believe? You believe what everybody else is saying, or do you believe the Word of God? Look, don't believe nothing I say. Take it to God. And, and here's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a lot of people having these same kind of confirmations. This is why it's so exciting to me that I'm not the only one having it. I've seen 11-11 on the clock more than usual the past month. we got uh, we got to be going soon because they're in a hurry to put the Luf Luciferus in our blood, uh, body, and mind. I say we are... Now on wobble time, wobble time before gobble time. I love that. So, um, oh, let me show you this too. This lady here, she, um, um, Abby Jacobs, she gave me permission to, to share this email with you. Um, says, wow, sister. No, that was me. <laughs> Hold on. No. Wait a minute. That's me. Hold on. Let me find where she sent the post. Hold on. I'm sorry, guys. I'm looking at the wrong... I'm looking at my post here. Okay, here we go. Hi, my name is Abby, and I have something exciting to share with you. Last week, I had a dream. Very short and to the point. Maybe even a vision going in and out of sleep. But I saw a huge sign that was close up, and it said in big black letters, 333. The background was a blue sky with white fluffy clouds. Then all of a sudden, I looked down, and everything was really dark. And houses were burnt, to a, uh, were burnt but to a crisp. Flat on the ground, like maybe a bomb had taken out everything. I saw 666, but I was afraid to, or felt like it had anything to do with me. I've been wondering what 333 is. I even told my husband about the dream, and he asked him, and asked him if he knew what I could stand, what I could stand for. When I watched your video, as soon as I uh, heard 333, I had to pause the video to mentally prepare because I knew God was about to reveal what it meant. And holy cow, does he work in, a, in great ways. Now to think about my dream, I think the 333 would be a sign of us in the clouds when Jesus, while things on the earth, will be facing Satan 666. Creepy, I know, but I felt the dream that it had, something to, that it had nothing to do with me and I wasn't worried about it. How cool. I've been telling my husband we got like six months tops here still. But boy, you just made my day. Thank you for being obedient to God and looking up and sharing it with us. So glad I know what 333 was in my dream. God bless you. But um, guys, see, that's what, that's what I'm getting. See, I was thinking that we had six months left, you know, till May. And um, I'll be honest. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Felt that one coming. To be honest, I felt like we... um. You know, I was a little discouraged thinking we was going to have to go through the whole winter and then back into the spring, you know, and that's been on my mind. But, guys, that may not be the case. Now, it could be. You still could have to wait till the spring. I'm not trying to get everybody's hopes up too much. But the way these num this number 333 three, three keeps happening, think about this. What she's saying is 666. 333 is half of 666. I don't know if there's any meaning. And there's also something else. 333... Or 33.3 .3 is how many angels the devil stole from heaven or took from heaven with him. That's how many angels fell from grace. Um, if you know anything about the book of Enoch, the watchers or the fallen angels they called the watchers came down to Mount Hermon in the days of Jared and took wives. They, 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 they had a pact together and they promised not to, you know, that they would keep it, as, you know, between themselves. If anyone got caught, they would all be held accountable, not just one person and all that or one angel. 
But um, they landed on the 33rd degree parallel. This is something widely used in the occult and in the Freemasons especially. 33. 33 degree Masons. 33, 30, number 33. Well, the 33rd degree parallel is um, where 33 degrees latitude and 33 degrees longitude cross at a point at the peak of Mount Hermon. Mount Hermon is a section of three mountains. I can't remember the names of all three of them, but the middle one being Mount Hermon is the highest peak. It's called the High Place. That's what it's referred to. It's in Israel. It's near the Golan Heights. And it's also the same general place where Jesus did the, uh, the transfiguration where Moses and Elijah was seen by the um, couple of disciples. That was on Mount Hermon. Mount Hermon is a big mountain. They have a ski resort there. But um, the 33rd parallel is what it's called. It's where the 33 degree longitude and the 33 degree latitude cross together in, a, in a, like, a, like a coordinates. That's where the fallen angels landed. 33. Point three, thirty-three, thirty-three point three. It's a third, right? It's a third. Um, there's something interesting there. In, there's something under the surface there. I haven't quite figured out, but that's an interesting, interesting thing. So, um, oh, uh, there was more stuff than that. I just got to figure it all out. Okay. Um, oh yeah. Okay. The place that I work at, and without getting into de too, too much detail, we make stuff. To uh, protect people from fires. Okay, so God is wanting to protect us from the fires. She mentioned it in this. Uh, she talks about she saw in this dream that the earth was on fire. In my vision, it looked like a bomb had went off, and and, and right at the second that I was supposed to feel the burning and the pain from the bomb, boom! I was standing in front of Jesus. I think that something cataclysmic could happen, and we could get snatched out of here in a moment, in a second. Everybody might think that we were just disintegrated. But in reality, we were taken by Jesus, and we never felt a pain. We never, we never died. So I mean, that, that's a possibility. So, anyways, so I started this job two years ago, and the birthday of me starting this job was the first day, the Monday before Thanksgiving. Now I don't know what the date was. I haven't even bothered to look it up. I should have, but it would have been. So the 23rd is Monday, right? 23rd is three days before the 26th, and the 26th is three days before the 29th. So I don't know if that has anything to do with anything exactly, but it is interesting that the three and the three, three days before Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving is three days before um, the, the uh, November 29th, the signing thing. So guys, what I'm, what I guess what I'm getting at is I think that that week, that whole week could be high, right, high rapture watch. I think that he could come any time between Monday or even, even now. I mean, it doesn't, it could be, it could be next week. You know, it's very possible in my dream that I had recently about looking for um, cookware and stuff and everything was dressed up in fall. There was no nothing for Halloween there and there was nothing for Christmas there. That puts us in this time frame right here. Now, I know a lot of stores have actually put out Christmas stuff, but the point is that it's really too early to decorate for Christmas, too late to uh, be talking about Halloween, Thanksgiving. We're, we're at the, the season of Thanksgiving, so everything is going to be dressed out with with food, you know, um, cornucopias, you know, the, you know the theme, you know the, the Thanksgiving theme, and turkeys, you know, swirly curly cues from the pumpkin, the pumpkin vine, and you know different the, the things like that. That's what was in my dream, and um, so I knew it was a uh, we were getting ready for a celebration, but I didn't know it was Thanksgiving in my dream because you know you can't control what you're thinking and doing in your dreams a lot of times. You're just doing something. You don't even know why. You just are. I was looking for potatoes, <laughs> ironically. And um, potatoes is a big thing for Thanksgiving. It's a theme. That doesn't mean we're leaving on Thanksgiving necessarily, but it was a night time. It was obviously before. Now, let's just say hypothetically that my dream was trying to tell me that it was going to happen before Thanksgiving, the night before. The night before Thanksgiving, at uh, or even the day before Thanksgiving on the 25th, that afternoon, 11, 12 o'clock, would be when Israel, when the evening comes in Israel and it's flipped, the calendar flips over to the next day. So it'll actually be Thanksgiving in Israel before it is with us. So by nighttime, it's well into Thanksgiving. So what if it, what if that meant the night before that? See, we, we typically go out and get stuff for Thanksgiving the week of. A lot of times, the very night before. I mean, so, I mean that's not uncommon for us. Even Christmas shopping you know, on Christmas Eve, it's not uncommon common for us to do that. But sometimes I do go out the weekend before or the, you know, the week of. And, you know, even have to, if I have to go a couple times during the week after work just to grab some things that we need, you have it ready. Because, you know, your turkey's usually frozen. you got to let it thaw out for three or four days before it's ready to cook. So I always get that earlier in the week. But potatoes, I mean, 
that is almost seemed like something that you know oh man how can we forget the potatoes we have to go back and get it before you know before thanksgiving so there's that too guys um there's some other stuff you know i can't i can't think of it right now but um i just wanted to show you these emails are just just crazy how many people are seeing 333 and um I mean, it's amazing. Not only this video, but the past couple ones I've made, people are talking about 333 happening to them a lot. And it's really weird. Um, I don't know what it means, but it certainly could definitely mean the 333 day of the year. We know this year is a special year. 2020, the year of perfect sight, the year of deliverance in the Strong's Concordance. We've seen all the things that Matthew 24 and Luke 21 talk about happening in abundance this year. We've seen the craziest stuff with the with politics we've just seen we've seen a lot of crazy stuff and um you know it's just it's just one of those years where you know you know something something big is about to happen but um i'm not going to scroll through all of them guys you, you just you know you can go through them i mean there's a lot of there's a lot of comments between here and those other videos actually two other videos uh it makes so much sense the 333 seems to be the limit i can't wait brother um you know, I'll be honest with you, I'm not finding the ones I was looking at last night because they're probably way down at the bottom. So just, I'm telling you, there's a lot of people seeing it. And I've had people in, in, uh, at home, too, talking about it, too, that they've been seeing the number a lot. And also 555, which means a stripping off of like a garment. You know, when we leave, we're going to be stripping off mortality to put on immortality. That's what Paul says. We have to take, uh, put off it. We have to put off Immort uh, mortality, I mean, immortality, mortality, and put on immortality at the rapture. So that could be referring to the rapture too. And so, uh, anyways, guys, that's about all I got. Um, if you haven't accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, do it now while there's still time. Um, you need to go to God in repentance, and you need to confess your sins and admit you're a sinner because you know you need to to be. You need to come to God with a humble heart. You know. And, and you need to uh, believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he came to the earth as a man. He lived a life we couldn't live. He died on the cross. He was raised on the third day. He ascended to heaven and made atonement for our sins with his blood, guys. His blood covers our sins. He, he took our place on the cross. He, took, he became sin and nailed it to the cross. We are justified and made white and clean through his blood. There's, it's Jesus plus nothing. That's all it is. There's nothing else to it. You accept Jesus Christ and believe in Him. That's what gets you to heaven. It says we go to heaven. Um, we, we're saved by grace through faith, not of our works, lest any man boast. It's a gift from God, guys. It's a gift. It's not something you can earn. And if to try to earn it is almost, it's futile. Why would you try to earn something that's already been given to you? That doesn't even make sense. And besides, how does that make Jesus feel when He gave His life for you and you're still trying to prove you're worthy? He's already paid the price. He's already done the work, guys. Just believe it. That's all you got to do is believe it, and you're saved and sealed to the day of redemption. Believe it with your heart and confess it with your mouth. That is the requirements. Believe the gospel, the gospel of your salvation. That is what gets you to heaven. Because no other name under heaven or earth is... Um, by, is there by what by which one must be saved? Jesus Christ is the only name you can be saved that will save you. Jesus is the only one. He's the only one that was perfect enough and met the right conditions to be able to make a sacrifice that was perfect and pure to forgive our sins forever. He did it. He's worthy. Just believe it. And be happy <laughs> and be ready for the rapture because it's about to happen, guys. Listen, I love you all so much. Um, I'm still looking for things. Um, I'm sure that I'm going to see a million more things before the uh, before the weekend's over, <laughs> and um, I'll have something for you again tomorrow. But guys, just keep looking up. Uh, be encouraged. Spread the gospel. See you later. Bye.